don't want to come to my channel. I'm taking a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And I'm going to be doing these quickly. So we're going to be continuing on with the road to Avonlea. Um, some of this I'm working off memory because I haven't actually had a chance to watch these again. But remember, I saw these as a kid. And I actually remember some of the episodes in this one. Um, yes, the cat is in my lap. It's just a mixture of sickness and just kind of chaos with the kid. Um, which implies the pile of Peppa toys um, here in this corner because she's finally decided to get rid of her Peppa toys and is moving into princesses. Um, I am filming this on the 17th of February, so not as ahead of time as I normally prefer. Okay, let's get to this. And yes, I'm going to be briefly overviewing with um, Wikipedia on here for the episode. Some of these I actually do remember. Um, so this is season three of The Road to Avonlea. Um, it has, well, no idea how many episodes. <laughs> it has 13 episodes here. So the first one is The Ties That Bind. Um, this is Olivia and Jasper's wedding where, as kind of predicted, uh, Hetty decides to take after uh, and cause chaos. And then we have the bringing in of Janet's great aunt Eliza, who is coming to the wedding. And I'm going to guess that she's kind of taking the place of the, um, I think great aunt Eliza was in the, the Anne of Green Gables was Anne's, was Gilbert's aunt who stays and harasses everyone for a while. So this is, uh, I can probably vaguely remember this episode. It's obviously chaos. And of course it ends with a happily ever after. Felix and Blackie is an episode that involves Alec King. Um, they, the family purchases a horse that Felix decides to use in a business matcher um, that where he's using the horse to deliver things. Sarah and his sister uh, Sicily joined in, and of course, again, chaos ensues. Then we have another point of view. Um, this is an episode with um, Christopher Lloyd. If you're unaware of him, uh, your head's been somewhere. <laughs> and he's, if you, you don't recognize the name, Back to the Future. It's This is Doc. Um, so Christopher Lloyd is in this. Uh, Hetty being heady pushes her students too far for an academic problem and the parents get mad and she resigns because she's mad and a recently out of work actor Christopher Lloyd takes the position this position reminds me of what he did when he there was a film probably around the same time um, called because this came out in January of 92 where Christopher Lloyd was called Camp Nowhere, and he pretends to be a camp director to a bunch of kids whose parents are sending them off to various pointless camps like fat camps and computer camps and other stuff, um, and military camps, and they just want to have fun kind of thing. So, but then, of course, hilarity ensues, and Hetty will, Hetty returns to her position because, again, you have an out-of-work actor, and they want Hetty back. All right, so this is, the next episode is the... But when she was bad, she was horrid. This is part one. I actually remember this episode. This is the first two-part episode. They don't really do a lot of these. So in this episode, Sarah has a fight with her aunt about reach, um, over a dress with he which Hetty donates to a poor box. Sarah goes to get the dress back. Her and Fe uh, Felix meet a um, young girl by the name of Joe Pitts who is homeless and looks identical to Sarah. And they end up switching places. Um, and because Sarah um, wants to get away from her aunt for a while. And, of course, chaos ensues. The next episode is the, the When She Was Bad, She Was Horrid Part 2. This one involves... Um, Gus. So Sarah's actually gone off. She ends up um, kidnapped with Gus, if I remember correctly, who was kidnapped by his father. So 
Meanwhile, Joe is wrecking havoc with the King family. They still believe her to be Sarah. And, of course, it ends with both Gus and um, Sarah coming back. Hopefully you don't hear my four-year-old is home. This is being filmed at 5.30 in the evening. Um, I'm trying to get this done because this is due out next week, Friday. <laughs> um, so that, and, of course, it ends with happily ever after with, um, I believe if memory serves Joe gets a home and um basically Sarah gets home and so does Gus um the next one is called Aunt Janet Rebels this is a historical one where it involves um Janet trying to collect signatures for women's rights and she gets involved in a strike over women's wages and kind of there's going to be fights within the family um, so this is kind of more of a historical, interesting um, episode. Then we have A Dark and Stormy Night, which is, again, this is focused on Gus Pike, who becomes involved with a mysterious woman who's claiming to be running from her life to protect her fortune. And there's going to be whole chaos involved. Then you have Friends and Relations. This looks like a very interesting episode. This is a boys' episode. Um, this is where um, the boys, in this case, Alex, Felix... Dale and Gus P Jasper and Gus Pike go f ice fishing and of course Alec and Jasper are talking about their childhood and the boys are asking about girls because they're both approaching teen years and then you have vows of sign and then of course the apparently the women Janet Hetty and Olivia and uh, their friend Abigail McGowan go to some sort of auction and they start fighting over things um vows of silence is when janet uh receives a comb from alec olivia and hetty and felicity accidentally loses it and things go crazy because this was like an antique from their family from the king family um then you have after the honeymoon so this is a jealousy episode where um a female scientist comes to help Dale experiment with bats and gets a little bit too close and Olivia starts getting jealous and apparently Sarah and Felix investigate whether or not Jasper is a vampire. Well, no, he's not dead. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that's a, that very much a funny episode. Ah, uh, High Society. This is a Felicity-focused episode. So Felicity gets... Um, gets an award to go to Kingsport Lady College. So this is where Anne went to get her bachelor's degree. So this is, Felicity is going over to Nova Scotia. So she's going, she's going off the island as opposed to um, the college in Charlottetown. And she just starts kind of telling lies to make herself not the country girl that she is. And it makes a mess. Um, and then we have the calamitous courting of Hetty King, where a gentleman comes and starts, a salesman of selling ice skates starts courting Hetty King, which is going to be interesting. Hetty King does not get married. I know this series way too well. <laughs> Hetty King does not get married. All right. Now we have the last episode of the thing. So this is going to be a little bit complicated. So this is Old Friends, Old Wounds. So this one is focusing on um, more of the Anne of Green Gables side of the series. So Davy is misbehaving. He breaks Dora's doll. He's getting picked on at school. He runs home to apologize to Marilla. Um, and then he goes to the store with Lynn and he comes home and finds Marilla dead. Um, what's going on here is the actress who plays Marilla has physically died. Um, the actress has, in fact, died, so they have to piece together some things um, to get her out of the, basically, show, because she died rather suddenly. She was very old and frail. Um, if you remember, this is happening in 1992, the, and she was already old, and the Anne films made by Selwyn were made in the, kind of, the mid-80s. So she has aged, the actress herself has aged. Um, this is when you get the only 
cameo you do not see Anne, which is very, very odd. Why on earth they Megan Fellows would make Izzy. Um, the actor who does play Gilbert Bly does arrive for Marinella's funeral um, and basically says Anne couldn't come because she has scarlet fever. So that's just kind of an excuse because Megan Fellows couldn't be there for whatever reason. So Jonathan Crombie is the actor who played Gilbert Bly in the original series. He does, of course, come back for the later um, last series. You don't see him anymore, unfortunately, because he, I think he died of a brain aneurysm. Or aneurysm. So that is really it. Um, and basically they find out that Green Gables is foreclosed upon, and I'm sure that they're able to fix that problem. Um, again, I don't remember that episode quite well, and at the point that I saw this stuff when I was young, I hadn't watched the Anne of Green Gables films. So I didn't watch those until later. So that's really it for this uh, review. I'm going to be trying to get the rest of these in because I am, in fact, um, behind on my road to Avalanche just because it's hard to um, watch watch things at home. My daughter has been going to bed late. She's back to her, I'm obsessed with reading, so I'm reading like 10 children's books a night. My husband is reading five. Um, yeah, <laughs> she's four and a half um, and chaotic. So, and just kind of going to bed at eight o'clock and I'm just exhausted. So I am getting behind on these. Um, I will, that's the reason I'm doing this by memory. Um, I will try to watch at least a few episodes and I'm staring at the last season, which I actually know the very last episodes, um, of that because that's what I remember. But nonetheless, this is a brief overview and I do actually remember the twin Sarah episodes. Um, so, and this is the second to last season before, um, the actress playing Sarah actually leaves. So. Still love the series. I mean, I don't have to watch these as an adult after watching the first couple of seasons. No, I still love these series. There's still great historical value in them. Um, and again, it has a weird ending. Uh, it definitely does not line up with actually what happened to Green Gables. In the books, you actually don't, I'm assuming that Davy takes over. I can't remember in the books because by the time Rainbow Valley, um, not Rainbow Valley, but Rilla of Ingleside happens Marilla's long gone and she died when Rilla was a little girl which makes sense considering how old she she was old when she got Anne when she was 12 um when Anne was 12 and now by the time she dies Anne's got five kids who are approaching teenage years um because Rilla of course is the youngest but that's that is the book reviews you can definitely check those out um, they are balancing across um, these. Let me see if that one would have been out when I'm balancing. This is three. Where are we? Um, yeah. Yeah, because this is balancing off the Chronicles of Avonlea, which is the short stories. So, nonetheless, that is it for this review. Be sure to like and subscribe. Again, I will be finishing the TV series. We will be moving on to the Boxcar Children, which I am working on um, now, and I need to get to the movies and finishing up my Titanic. I have one more Titanic media. Media is difficult for me to get through, so uh, books are easier. So, nonetheless, like and subscribe. Check out the rest of the channel. A lot more is coming. The Boxcar Children are my next series, then I will get to the Wings of Fire, which yes, I own. No, I haven't touched them yet. I'm trying to get through Boxcar Children. So, Again, like and subscribe, and thank you.